Hello to everyone. Insurance is important, right? But what is even more important is to understand what exactly it means. What is real coverage and what is just waste of your money. In this video, I'm going to share my opinion on this topic. So if you have nothing to do, grab your favorite drink and stay with me. Welcome back! If you don't know me, my name is Pavlin and I'm a motorcycle traveler. On this channel I usually upload anything related to long motorcycle trips, so you might consider subscribing. Also, if it's not a problem for you, press this like button, it will help the algorithm spread my videos. Anyway, we talk about insurance. It actually came a little bit late in my country, around 25-30 years ago. Before that, we were driving our cars or motorcycles without it. And I'm not saying that it was better, but it works somehow. Nowadays, of course, you have to have an insurance on every vehicle that you own. Car, motorcycle, bus, truck, whatever. You should have an insurance to be legal to ride it on the road. We call this civil insurance or third party insurance, whatever you want to name it. This basically helps to reduce the total amount of the price and everyone to be insured or I will say Partly insured. I said partly insured, but let me explain what I mean. Every time when you have an accident and it is your fault, your insurance company will pay the damages and the cost of the other driver or rider. On the other hand, if it's his fault, his insurance company will cover your damages. Unless you have another type of insurance, which one in Europe will named full casco, which is mean that you're gonna be paid, doesn't matter is it your fault or not, but this is something completely different and uh, it is not even uh, possible for motorcycles, at least in my country and in Germany. There will be always part casco, which is mean that in some situations you won't be paid. I'm sure that most of you know what I mean, especially if you pay at least once for civil insurance or third-party insurance for your motorcycle or your car. So nothing more to be said on this topic. But when it comes to the personal insurance or life insurance, the things became a little bit different. The terms and conditions that they've got are so complicated that even if you spend hours to read it, it will be very difficult to understand it unless you're a lawyer. I'm absolutely sure that you understand very well exactly what I mean. Most of people, me included, almost never read the full terms and conditions of the things that we sign. They're so long, so difficult to read and so complicated, as I told you. That's why I prefer to skip it. And I'm sure that you're the same. But let me now tell you a funny story that it was said to me a few years ago. This social experiment was made from the company that produced software. You know, when you want to download a specific software, you have to go to their website, find exactly what you need, and before you press download, you have to click a box over there to agree with their terms and conditions, right? And I'm sure that it is the same for you, but I never read it. I just click the box and download what I need. But this company, the company that I told you, with the social experience, what they have done is in their terms and conditions, they include a fine print text saying that if you click this box, you're obligated to give them your first unborn kit. And guess what? After a few days, I don't know how many hundreds of people uh, click this box and agree with their terms of condition without even reading it. So this was just a, a, a social experiment, nothing wrong is happening, but in the real life, you have to read everything because you never know exactly what you're signing. So never sign or never click the box before you read the full terms and conditions. I said this to myself and I hope you'll do it as well. But when it comes to the personal insurance, the things became a little bit different. They are advertised very well everywhere. So when I go, for example, to renew the insurance of my motorcycles or, or my car, they always offer me a different uh, personal insurance, medical help, life insurance, or anything else. They are advertised very well. They, they've got these nice packages. The prices usually are not that high. I understand the marketing. I know how the system works. But when you start asking questions, the things became a little bit foggy. Of course, they're answering the questions, but it's always like some kind of uh, model. They go to this model and say, yeah, this is this, this is this, this is that, okay. But uh, 
The first time when I decided to make this life insurance for myself was when I went to Alaska in 2009 because it was a um, long, maybe not so easy trip. There was some kind of adventure moment. I decided to make this life insurance and I was believing that if something happened with me, at least my family will appreciate it. So I signed this uh, deal. It was, it was not that expensive, something like, like $100, not that expensive. And the coverage is supposed to be like $100,000 in the case I'm dead. And then uh, when I, on the way to Alaska, I got like three different flights. So I spent almost like 20 hours flying to get there. And I've got more than enough time. And in the planes, I read the terms and conditions, all of them. It was a big leaflet, you, you just spread like that, many different pages, and I read everything. They say that if you're out of public roads, doing any sport, activities, hiking, climbing, swimming, rafting, kayaking, encountering wild animals or unpredictable weather conditions, visiting old or non-secured buildings, flying with non-commercial planes or using non-registered vehicles. If you are attacked by criminals or you're involved in some kind of criminal activities, the insurance provider will not cover anything. This was like a cold shower for me. Actually, I was planning all of these activities, except the crime, but what an idiot. I should have read it before I signed. But it's not about the money, it was more about the way it was explained to me, or to be more precise, how it was not explained to me when I was signing. The dealer wanted just my money and he got the money, he never asked me what I want to do there. Since then, I mean 2009, I never even thought to sign for life insurance again until this summer when I went to my trip around Europe. And I guess that uh, many of you now will expect me to recommend a specific insurance company that is work well and will help you with everything, but unfortunately I cannot. The main reason to change my opinion on this topic was the accident that I got in Istanbul, Turkey a year earlier. It was okay, it all went well to me and I was back on the road after one week with a little pain in my knee and I was limping for a week, but that was fine, I was lucky but it could finish really badly, even dramatically. So that's why I decided to give another chance to insurance companies to convince me that it's worth to spend the money for their insurances. So I went to three very well-known insurance companies in Bulgaria. Actually, they are international companies. They've got uh, branches in Bulgaria. And I was asking about specific um, packages, I mean life insurance or medical assistance. This is exactly what I need. And I asked them three very important questions. The first was, will I be insured if I ride off-road and have accident? The second was, what will be if I have an accident, but it is my fault? And the third was, will I be insured if I make an accident by myself? For example, I'm riding fast, I underestimate one turn and I missed the, the turn and went into the bush. After they spent around 30 minutes reading all of the terms and conditions, making some phone calls to the main offices, the answers that they gave me to all of my three questions were no. They said that uh, they will pay if I have an accident, but it is not my fault. They will also say that they can pay me if I'm not on the road, if I'm off-road, but only if this dirt road or off-road is part of international um, road system of the specific country or town. If it's not, they won't pay anything. And on the third question, will they pay if I crash by myself? They say absolutely not. Keep in mind that one of these companies was recommended to me from a friend who worked there. He said they are a very serious company, they always pay for everything. Yes, it is correct, they do, but in their terms and conditions and they were not suitable with my case. So after that, I decided not to give up like this and I went to another one. It was like an insurance dealer, which is mean that it's an office that have insurances to all different companies. And I asked the same questions and they list one of the companies that uh, can insure me. Uh, Off-road, of course, absolutely not uh, crashed by myself. They were not sure. They say maybe not, 
but they said that if I have an accident with another vehicle on the road, even if it's my fault, they're gonna pay. But they will definitely need police protocol to explain what exactly is happening. And uh, I asked them a few times, are you sure about it? Are you sure about it? Can you show me this in the terms and conditions? And we spent another one, maybe 30 minutes, reading the terms and conditions, and we couldn't find that they will pay. But also, I couldn't find that they won't pay. That's why I agree to, to sign this uh, insurance and got it with me. Luckily, I don't need to prove myself that I was right or wrong, so nothing happened on the trip. But until today, I didn't know about this money. Do they worth it? Or here, you might stop the video and try to convince yourself that even if you're covered only 50% of the time, because I understand that if they pay, if it's not your fault, then they don't pay. If it's your fault, this is like 50% of the time, it is still worth it, yeah? Okay, they won't pay when you're riding off-road and something else, but you still have some kind of coverage and maybe it's still worth the money and because they're not that much. It's not that expensive, honestly. Fair enough, but what do you mean with this the rest will be covered? If you're hit from someone else and it's not your fault, your damages or even yourself if you need to go to the hospital, your medical bills will be paid from his civil insurance or third-party insurance. If you have an airplane crash, it will be paid from the airplane company because it is included in your ticket. If you slide during your bad time in your hotel, the hotel will cover the bill. It is the same if you have a problem in the local mall, let's say you fall over the stairs, I'm sure that the mall will cover all the bills because they don't need this public scandal. So when exactly is going to be covered by the company that I just told you. With this, I'm not saying that insurances are something really bad and you shouldn't touch it and make it anywhere in any time. No, absolutely not. The insurances are correct and they should be used, but you have to read very well the terms and conditions in advance and understand what exactly it said, because they have all the legal rights to say no if the terms and conditions are not met, as I said to you before. So usually the insurance companies are work on regresses. If you have an accident and if it's not your fault, the other person insurance will pay to your insurance and your insurance will cover your damages. If you have an accident in your hotel, as I told you earlier, maybe your insurance will pay you, but they will ask the money from the insurance of the hotel. And it is the same if you have an accident in the local mall. They will always try to make this regress and take the money from someone. But if you don't have your insurance, you can make this and ask the money that you need. And they, I'm sure that they will pay without any problems, but because as I told you, they don't want any scandals. Also, you shouldn't forget that most of the countries will ask for an additional insurance before you enter it. For example, if you go to Russia, before you receive your Russian visa, you actually cannot receive your Russian visa without you have an insurance for every single day that you plan to spend in the country. If this is three months, you need insurance for three months. If it's one month, it will be one month of insurance. And it will be the same for many other countries. So your life insurance might help you, but it is not something that uh, you can rely to help you everywhere and not spending any more money for insurances. You have to pay it anyway. Before I finish this video, let me share another one personal experience with you guys. Recently, I bought one very interesting device from Garmin. It is a satellite communicator named Inrich 2. It was recommended to me from a Turkish friend named Oskai. Thank you very much, Oskai. It's a great device. Great option that might save your life. It works with satellites and thanks to SOS button and the features, you can be found and rescued almost everywhere around the world. So far, so good. But there are some things that you need to consider because the device is not cheap. It's around $400. Fair enough, you might say it might be nothing for you, but then you need a registration in Garmin website. This is also not a big deal, you might say again, but then you need a sub subscription model for one year and it will cost you $25 per month. Again, you might say $25 per month and nothing. I can use this option, this SOS button, and I can be found everywhere. This might be life-saving. And yeah, absolutely, you'll be correct. But there is always one big but. 
And you know everything that you say before but is shit. Everything what you're gonna say after but is what really matters. After you sign with Garmin, you'll need an additional plan with company named IERCC, International Emergency Response Coordination Center. The price depends on many circumstances. The terms and conditions will take hours to read and probably weeks to understand. From what I understood, they are not insurance companies either. Their frequently asked questions section is also very interesting, so if you have nothing to do, you can try to read it. So good luck! Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is some kind of scam. I'm sure that it works very well, but you have to pay for it and the price is not going to be what you expect. So as I told you, you're gonna buy the device, but then you have to pay a lot of money on the top to use it properly and i honestly don't know any other insurance that will cover the the situations that we like adventure riders need so if anyone knows please let me know in the comment sections below i would like to read their terms and conditions and eventually sign a contract with them if you want to learn more about long motorcycle trips check the rest of the videos on the channel i've got almost 1000 on any topic if you want to learn but you don't have the time you might consider joining my online course yes it will cost you money but at the moment it's on 50 percent discount and for only eight hours you'll be able to learn the most important and finally start with your dream adventures all the details will be in the description down below see you next time ciao